This is day two of chapter 5.9, the transformation of linear functions. Remember, you have three transformations. You have um, translation, rotation, and reflection. You learned these back in the sixth grade. These were your three transformations. Remember that translation is a slide. They both have SL. A reflection is a flip. And a rotation is a turn. Okay, those are on the back of your assignment. Let's take a look at what these graphs look like. A vertical translation, when the y-intercept B is changed, the graph is translated vertically. Okay, so when we change the y-intercept, that's when the graph changes. Okay, when we're looking at this graph, I see that the parent function was f of x equals x, which is the same thing as y equals x. Remember, y equals mx plus b was our slope of a line, our equation of a line. And that's the same thing as f of x. These are exactly the same thing. This is just a fancy way to write it. It's called function notation. You learned that back during first six weeks. Um, your b is your y-intercept. Your m is your movement or your slope. So our first parent function is this blue one. That's where we started. Then each of the additional g, h, and k are our child functions. Why are they g, h, and k? No clue. They're just the next letters in the alphabet. I wasn't alive when those decisions were made, so I can't tell you why they use those letters. They're just the ones that come next in the alphabet. So then we have um, the first child function, g of x, went up 3 because we had a plus 3. The next child function went down 2 because we had a negative 2. Then we have the next function, we went down by negative 4. So it translated down 4. So if you change the y-intercept, that's how it translates. All right, now let's talk about a reflection. A reflection is going to have a change applied to the slope. Okay? A reflection is going to have the slope multiplied by negative 1. This is the same thing that we talked about when we were doing, um, or not the same thing, but similar to when we were talking about perpendicular lines, um, where they had a, one has a positive slope, the other has a negative slope. But in this case, the number remains the same. Unlike perpendicular lines, the number became the reciprocal. This one, it changes, it stays the same. It doesn't change the other part of it. All right, so we're talking about reflection. Sorry, I take a little break there. Um, reflections with the slope is all that's going to change. So in this equation, or this graph, you see that the parent function was 2 of x, 2 times x, and then the child function is negative 2x. So if you had a full y equals mx plus b or f of x equals mx plus b, your equation would look like f of x equals, say we had, 4x plus 3. Well, the reflection of that would be just to change this 4 to negative 4. And that's going to reflect it across the y-axis. Okay? That's a reflection. All right, let's talk about a rotation. A rotation changes its steepness. Okay? The, um, point, depending on where it goes from, it could be rotating around its y-intercept. So if that's where it's going from, all right, a rotation is a transformation about a point. Then the graph you see here, the rotation is around the y-intercept at 0, 0. A rotation is going to have the slope changed um, instead of the y-intercept because it changes the steepness of the problem. So if you start with the parent function, f of x equals x, then you can see all they did on each of the child functions is change the slope. This one was 1 half, this one's 3, this one's 5. 
and that change that causes the graph to change to rotate when they made the slope smaller it rotated downward or in a clockwise direction when they increased the slope it made it rotate in a counterclockwise direction or kind of go up and made it steeper so if the slope lowers then it's going to be a shallower line less steep as you can see from the blue to purple if it the slope increases then you see that the steepness gets higher and higher okay if they changed the slope also to a negative then it would have changed the side of the um, y-axis that it's on, so then it becomes not only a rotation, but also a reflection. Notice in these, all of the y-intercepts remained exactly the same. Okay. Alright, let's do an example from your assignment. Looking at these two functions, you have the parent function 1 half of x minus 5, and then you have the child function 3 fourths of x minus 5. Notice the y-intercepts didn't change. Only our slopes changed. So without even graphing it, I can go back and look. Is this going to be a translation, a rotation, or a reflection? Well, it's not going to be a translation because my y-intercept didn't change. It's either a reflection or a rotation. So I look at my slopes and I see that this slope is positive and this one's positive. So it's not a reflection because they're not opposites. So the only thing left is this is going to be a rotation. So without even graphing it, I can tell that it's a rotation because all they changed was the slopes. And I went from 1 half to 3 fourths. So that means my slope got bigger. So that means my line is going to get steeper. So if I have 1 half x minus 5, it's going to cross through. It's going to be approximately look about like that. And then 3 fourths is going to be a little bit taller. So it would be more like approximately like that. My stylus is too fat, so I can't draw the lines very well. But they aren't going to change much because all I went from 1 half to 3 fourths. I only increased it by a quarter. That's a rotation. If I had changed the y-intercept, it would have been a translation. If I had made one slope negative but kept the same number, it would have been a reflection. Go ahead and start your assignment.